from BLC Studios in Mankato, Minnesota, this is the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan. With your host, Shane Frederick. Welcome to the Maverick Hockey Live Podcast, presented by Duncan. My name is Shane Frederick. I'm the host of the show, and joining me today is Nathan Smith from the Minnesota State hockey team. How are you doing today, Nathan? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Um, first of all, I guess we got to get this right out of the way. Congratulations this week. You were named WCCHA pl- pl- preseason <laughs> player of the week. I'm going to get that wrong all season long. I feel like until, I will too. Yeah. So CCHA preseason player of the year. Uh, congratulations on that. Did that come as a bit of a surprise to you, or what, what did you think when when you heard that you were getting that uh, preseason award? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I kind of forgot they do the preseason stuff, so um, I wasn't really expecting anything to come out. Um, but it's it's nice to be recognized by other coaches in the league. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that uh, there's a lot of credit that should go to all my teammates and everything like that for, you know, setting me up with success and stuff like that so um there's obviously a lot of work to do still um needs to be backed up it doesn't just you know come like that it's not easy so well it's a lot one of, of those to be done still. right and it's one of those things too I, I as a person who used to vote on that or the the media poll or conduct a media poll um they're fun and fans like them and i'm sure players like them to some degree but really, once the season starts, everyone kind of forgets about all the yeah, preseason yeah, exactly. <laughs> picks, right? Uh, just something to talk about in the couple of weeks leading up to the season. Yeah, I completely forgot that they even they even do that <laughs> stuff. So, and I think everyone—I shouldn't say everyone—but I'm going to guess a lot of people thought Dryden McKay was going to win that uh, award, coming as a, back as pre as the uh, regular season uh, MVP for the WCHA last year. Yeah, and I mean, I would definitely put him above me. Um, he's probably our most valuable <laughs> and most important player on the team. So without him, we don't go as far as we do. And so Dryden did make the preseason all-conference team uh, yep. along with yourself and uh, Julian Napravnik up front and uh, Akita Hirose, uh at defense. Uh, so four of the six spots went to Minnesota State hockey players uh, as well. Uh, you guys were picked to win the CCHA this year in the in the preseason polls. So no surprise, uh, going back to your last couple of years here, a lot of expectations fall upon this program, huh? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I think it just says a lot about our program and, you know, the, the work we do every year, day in and day out, and the way coach prepares our team to be ready for the season. And I think all the guys that were picked for the all-conference team, I think they're, they were, you know, that was the right thing. I think they deserved it. So uh, again, we're here with Nathan Smith. He's a junior forward, had 25 points last year, second on the team, nine goals, 16 assists, um, had a really strong NCAA tournament with four goals in the three games, including two in the uh, national semifinal, which unfortunately you guys lost to St. Cloud State. But um, I'm sure that has a lot to do with you getting this preseason award as players, um, coaches, media, whoever. I know it's the coaches who vote, but for people who are kind of looking at what Minnesota State's going to do this year, they're going to see how uh, your season ended last year. And, uh, you know, the last few weeks uh, were really strong for you. Um, What do you think? uh, Did you feel like you got better as the season went on yourself and and had to have that strong postseason? Yeah, I think um, as the season goes on, I just find my rhythm and you know, things start to flow and you get your, your lines all set and who you like to play with and get good chemistry with everybody. And I think for us, it was just clicking at the right time. You know, I think going back to the, that point last season, too, with such a strong uh, end, end of the year and you're a third round draft pick of, of the Winnipeg Jets, I'm sure as uh, what happens with every program, people start looking at who might leave, who might come back. Um, you know, what made that, what was that decision like for you, uh, immediately following the season? Did you know right away that you were going to come back to Minnesota state for a junior season or was it something that you put a lot of thought into, um, in terms of, you know, comparing, uh, what might be offered out there to turn pro or to come back? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely didn't know I was coming back right away. Um, it was majority leaning that way. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I just felt like after the season we had and the group of guys that we have, um, it just made it pretty pretty easy for me to decide that I wanted to come back and give it another shot after making it so far and coming so close. Um, after the season, I, I didn't know like right away, like I said, but I did give it a little bit of thought, and I think I still need um, some work in some areas, and I just felt like being under Coach Hastings and with the group of guys that we have here, I think that you know would prepare me better for the next level. It seems like it's uh, it's been a good spot for a lot of players to to really develop and 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 really be ready when it is time to go. Whether it's after a a third year or a fourth year, or in some cases, uh, I suppose with the COVID situation, a, a fifth year. Yeah, I mean, you know, like we have uh, Reggie and. Um, Nails here or McNeely Mm -hmm. Um, and then we just got a transfer Benton Mass and I know all three of those guys are fifth years and they're super excited to get back with this group and give it another shot themselves. When you look back at that uh, NCAA tournament experience and um, you know your freshman year was one where that was uh, completely taken away from uh, the team where you thought you were going to go really far and um, but you also knew kind of the heartache that went into the, the previous years in the NCAA tournament for this program. Um, what kind of steps do you think the program took last year to win those that first game, win the second game, get to the Frozen Four? Do you think that changed things for, for this program? Yeah, absolutely. I think I uh, just kind of set the bar. The bar is set pretty high now. I mean, we made it to the Frozen Four um, the years in the past now, but I think we can keep building on that year year to year now um, like you said the freshman year was taken away from us but uh, I think that just motivated us more and more the next year for you know for us to reach the the level that we did getting to the frozen four uh, you, you came to, to Minnesota State uh, obviously playing junior hockey in between but from Florida and I know people have uh, talk to you a little bit about that experience to, to grow up playing hockey in Florida. But what what kind of dreams and expectations did you have as a, as a kid? Did you how much did you know about college hockey? Um, I think if I remember right, you and I talked before the Frozen Four was in was in Tampa. Um, and and did you go to it at at, at that I time? Did, yeah, how old, when how North old Dakota you? won it. I forget how old I was <laughs> to be exact now, but um, I like I started hockey roller hockey when I was six. To be honest, I didn't even know what college hockey was. Um, I was just, I was still a kid, you know, I just wanted to get out and play. Um, it wasn't, you know, until we, st- I started playing ice hockey until I was 11 years old. Okay. And, um, you know, as the years go by, like, I'm, I'm still pretty young. I don't, I don't really know what's going on. But, um, you know, once I get older, 15, 14, around there, you know, I just start to realize that college hockey is something that I want to do and hopefully professionally one day. Uh, I've talked to a few uh, f- players uh, who've played for the Mavericks who started off in roller hockey, and most of them have been from, whether they're from Florida or California, or I remember one who was from Missouri. Um, how, how does roller hockey prepare you for ice hockey? Do you, is, it, is it hand skills? Is it just uh, thinking the game? Is there s- anything about skating that, that, that relates to it? What, 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 what's that like? Um, well, it is a completely different game. There's obviously no hitting. There's no offsides. It's four on four. Um, I think it's just a little bit more of a creative game as opposed to like ice hockey is a lot of north south. And um, I don't know, I guess since that's what I started on, I think I would say, yeah, the, the, the hands and the creativity, the skating, I would say, isn't much different. The stopping is a little different. Mm-hmm. So, you know, whenever we play the roller hockey and then come back to ice when it was ice season in the summer, um, it would be a little bit tougher to kind of get the transition back and get our edges back. Um, but for the most part, I, I never really struggled doing that. Um, but I will say that, like, the stick handing ab- ability and the vision and just anything like that, the creativeness is comes from roller hockey. When's the last time you played roller hockey? I was going to play this summer. I try to play every summer, okay. um, but I didn't get a chance to this summer. Um, I think I would say the, what was it, two summers ago? Okay. Um, when we had the long the long break is when I played. So okay. That's the last time I've played roller. Enjoyed it, though? You yeah. You still enjoy playing yeah. that? I just try to get in some tournaments with some some friends back home. Mm-hmm. And it's just for fun, so and try it's, to get nice some... to, it's nice to get away from ice hockey sometimes. Right. And still be doing, you know. And still be playing hockey. Yeah. <laughs> You got to get some of your uh, your current teammates uh, out on the 
the sport court or the blacktop or whatever it is you play on. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a little it's like tile. Yeah. It's yeah, it's it's not concrete really though. It's fun though. I mean, we've talked about it like Borch. I live with Borch and I've talked about it with him. I've talked about it with Aikido. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Morton just talked about it with him. Um, but I don't know if we'll ever get those guys down to Florida for a tournament. <laughs> it'd be fun though. It would be yeah, fun. Absolutely. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. Um you, you, you know, kind of going back a little bit to uh, let's go back to the ice, I guess. And uh, you mentioned some things that you'd like to work on uh, this season, you know, to, to con- continue to grow as a player and to uh, um, prepare yourself to to, uh, to be a pro. What what are some of those areas that you think uh, you need to work on and that you'd like to get better at? Uh, well, defensively, I definitely need to improve. Um, just work on defending with my stick, keeping guys on the outside. Um, being hard to play against, uh, and just scoring more five on five. I've produced a decent amount on the power play last year, and not enough on five on five. So, I'd like to improve in both those areas. Yeah, you were one of the top scorers in the WCHA on the on the power play last year, I believe. And uh, um, it's got to be fun to be on the power play, but it seems as as everyone knows, uh, if you can score five on five. Uh, that 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 becomes such a key factor for a team, right? Because yeah. uh, so many other, so many goals are scored in in the special team situations. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's nice to always capitalize, and you always want to on the special teams. And if it's a tight game, maybe you get one power play a game, and that could be the difference. But um, scoring on five on five, like you said, is very important too. You know, we we mentioned earlier going back to the Frozen Four about about you um, making a name of yourself, but. Uh, uh, you have to laugh. I'm sure you you got a, a little bit of grief after the the, the Frozen Four game because uh, they uh, continued to get your name wrong in the broadcast and called you Davis, I believe. Yeah, I, was, um, I think it was Nathan Davis or yeah, something. Some... I don't know. <laughs> but I did I did watch back the game and just some parts of it just to just to hear that. Yeah. What 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 kind of what did you hear from people and what did uh, what did you think of that? About the name, yeah, because it was kind of funny. Because I, it, I think it, in some ways, it showed how good a game you were having because he said your name so many times, and and you know, all due respect to John Buchagross because he's done so much for college hockey yeah. and he's such a, a, um, a fan of it and he's such a supporter of it at a national level. So you got to love that. But but it is kind of funny that uh, people noticed that. Uh, hey, this guy's playing really well, and that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it doesn't bother me much. I mean, it's just a, it's a mistake, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, he was mispronouncing a lot of other guys' names, too. <laughs> uh, there's a couple um, European guys on St. Cloud who, mm-hmm. in the warm-ups. He, uh, he mispronounced like three of them, and it just wasn't even close. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty funny, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't really bother me a whole lot. Well, as uh, a person who's now speaking into a microphone, I can uh, sympathize a little bit. As a person who was doing a lot of writing for 20 years, uh, covering <laughs> the team, it was I just needed to make sure it was spelled right. I didn't necessarily need to say it. Right. And, uh, it, <laughs> it's it, a lot different when you're saying it than right. you're just writing it. Inevitably, I'd get a line chart from some team and uh, you know some visiting team, and there would be a very long name that I would have to double check how to spell. And um I always thought, well, I'm, I'm, that guy's guaranteed to score a goal tonight or have an assist or have some factor in the so game. So you have to say. I'm going to have to write his name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but better to write it than to say it, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the season coming up. Uh, obviously, it starts in a couple weeks. What's practice been like so far? What's been that energy like for, for you and, and for this team uh, going forward here? Um, it's been nice to get back. Um, it's nice skating with the guys. Uh, coaches are limited right now uh, for the amount of time they get to spend with us in practice. Uh, but our captains have been doing a good job in picking up, you know, where the coaches leave us on on the day off that they don't get to be out there, and uh, keeping the pace up. You know, making sure we're in, in good shape. And um, the coaches have done a good job when they're out there too. We just started doing special teams. I think late last week it was. Um, so we carried that over into this week a little bit. Um, but I think, I think our team's looking pretty solid. Um, it's, we have a first six games that are going to be really, really good tests for our team. Um, and I think it's going to be a good preparation for us heading into our conference games. Yeah, that, that, uh, first stretch. And I I talked about this uh, last week, uh, on this podcast with, uh, with Jack and with Benton, um, it is a grind to start off. I mean, to go to UMass, who won the national title, 
to play St. Cloud uh, at, at home, who you know is who was picked to win the NCHC, was the national runner-up, knocked you guys out of the Frozen Four. The following week, you're playing Providence, and then it's either Michigan with their loaded lineup of of <laughs> NHL draft picks, and uh, or UMD, who you know was also in the Frozen Four last year and has has won national titles. I mean, that's that's a grind. Does that excite you as a player? I mean, what, when you look at a schedule like that, um, as daunting as it could be, what 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 do you think of it? I mean, I think everybody on our team is pretty excited um, to get St. Cloud again at home. Um, kind of get you know get a chance to have some redemption on that uh, but I think everybody likes to play the best the best teams and obviously you don't you don't get much better than the national championships and the runner-up for your first two weekends and then um, like you said Michigan's got all the draft picks and UMD is just notorious for always being good every year and they're well coached so like I said, I think everybody on the team is excited to get the get the season started and for our first six games. Yeah, it's, it's it should be pretty exciting uh, for for everybody to watch and and be able to see those games. And I'm and you know on the flip side, I mean you guys, you're right there in the Frozen Four. I mean to have you know those four teams all playing each other in some form or another over the first couple of weeks of the season. I mean if you're a if you're a person who's marketing the sport of, of uh, college hockey, I mean, it really gets no better than that. It's, it seems uh, hopefully that uh, does a lot to kind of boost uh, boost the game even more. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a battle. Um, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. Um, but we just need to make sure we're prepared for that these next couple weeks here we have for practice. Um, you know, and then you go into the conference season after that, and uh, the, the conference uh, – you guys were not the unanimous pick to win the CCHA, uh, so that that lends me to believe that uh, you know there's some expectations that uh, things might be a little tighter. Uh, an eight-team league, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, the, some teams that that haven't been there in in the conference before aren't the, aren't there anymore. It's it's a little bit of a, uh, a a tougher schedule within your league, it seems. Yeah, um, you know, it's it sucks that. Those teams, I think Alabama Huntsville is not even a, not even playing this year. I right. Um, so it sucks to see like teams like that drop off. Um, but you know, for our our sake and our league's sake, like I think it'll be really good because you're playing a good team every every weekend. Um, we don't we don't try and like read into that too much. We know it's going to be hard every weekend, um, and we just try and do our best to get prepared for each team every week. And play we your game, right? Yeah, we yeah. know it's going to be hard, so we don't we don't try and read into all the noise and just kind of block it out. Just just play, really. It's interesting you mentioned uh, how the coaches are limited right now, and it, the college hockey is so unique in that way, where you you have that limited time on the ice, or at least the coaches do, until that official start date. And the official start date, uh, you're, you're playing the national champions. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I know that's not uncommon. And there are some teams out there that are playing, um, that are playing uh, exhibition games. You've played exhibition games before, but to, to jump right in like that, um, I'm sure it helps to have a veteran team and, 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 a, and a group uh, who, who's been there before. But what is that like? I mean, do you feel like you'll, you're, you're fully prepared for something like that to jump right in uh, on, on day one? And, and, you know, instead of saying, hey, we're going to do a two-a-day practice, it's, uh, you know, going to go play the Minutemen. Yeah, uh, it's, it's going to be hard. Um, they're the national champions. I mean, they're, they're a solid team. They're good all around. Um, but... You know, we just have to do our best to make sure we're prepared for them and all the systems that they run just to get our systems down. And um, it's hard when the coaches are limited time. Um, it's hard to get the new guys in the swing of things and get them, sh- like, with our systems and get them to know them. Um, plus, work on special teams. It's just hard to do everything when you're limited time. And that's why I was saying, like, I think our captains do a really good job of kind of picking up where the coaches are leaving us off with on that off day. Um, uh, one more thing uh, to, to touch on with this season coming up is um, you mentioned playing St. Cloud and that, that first weekend at home. Um, you're going to have a, a full house that weekend, especially playing a, a team like St. Cloud. And I know last year you had a, a lot of games with little to no f- uh, fans and some with I think it, at most was 25%. What kind of excitement level is there to, to be 
you know, the, the opportunity to play in a, in a full arena downtown Mankato. I think, yeah, I think a lot of the guys kind of forgot what it feels like um, going the whole year. And I think at the start, we didn't have any. Mm -hmm. um, and then it went up to like 250, which we were like, holy crap, it feels like there's a ton of people <laughs> in here. Um, but really, there's just none almost. Um, so I think a lot of guys are really excited to just to see the building and the, the atmosphere of the rink. And because, you know, the freshmen haven't even seen it. And the soft sophomores this year haven't seen it either. So right. um, I think it might be a little bit like they might be a little nervous probably with everybody and all the noise, but I think uh, we'll get used to it pretty quick. Yeah. And uh, do you have some memories of your first year here playing and, and having a, a couple games like that where, where the crowd really uh, excited you and it was, it was a fun atmosphere to be in front of? Yeah, um, I actually didn't play the first weekend. My freshman year was ASU, um, but that weekend was pretty packed. But I'll never forget my first college games, which is the North Dakota weekend. Um, that I mean, it, I'm pretty sure it was sold out then. Mm -hmm. Even they had a bunch of fans there. I know they travel pretty well. Um, but that game that weekend was really fun. Yeah, that was a that was a great weekend of college hockey. And I remember sitting next in the press box next to the the beat writer Brad Schlossman from North Dakota, and both of us thinking that uh, come the year, end of the year we're going to see these two teams uh, in the Frozen Four. Uh, we, we, and uh, I think we would have too if if COVID hadn't uh, wiped out the the playoffs. Yeah, I think so too. Um, they had an un unbelievable team, and I think we did too. Mm -hmm. um, I think we definitely could have done a lot of damage that year. So it's pretty unfortunate that COVID ended that season. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, it holds, uh, it holds off this year and we're back to, uh, full crowds, full season, uh, full year. Yeah. Hopefully, because I'm not sure like how many more <laughs> weekends we can have. Are we playing? Are we not playing? You know, it's just kind of a pain and it got old a little bit, but I'm hoping there's, uh, there's no troubles with that and full crowd. Like you said, well, let's hope, uh, so, well, well, Nathan Smith, thank you so much for uh, being part of the podcast today. And uh, best of luck this, this season. And congratulations on the award again. And, thank you. Um, uh, really appreciate it. So. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're welcome. And that's the uh, Maverick Hockey Live podcast presented by Duncan. I'm Shane Frederick. He's Nathan Smith. Uh, we'll see you later on.